Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on sclerotinia in canola. I'm here with Rajat Kangura, our canola specialist with the Department of Agriculture and Food in Western Australia. So good morning, Rajat. Good morning, Domini, and good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, I'll talk about implications of sclerotinia in the current growing season and how to manage it. I'm sure all of you are enjoying one of the best uh, growing seasons in the century, but at the same time, I think that uh, fear of sclerotinia might be lurking on our minds. So this morning, I'll give you a quick snapshot of um, the current situation of sclerotinia as far as uh, where we are at the moment. Uh, especially uh, in terms of the current conditions. Uh, and also I'll um, give you some of the information about uh, the problem that we are having, especially sclerotinia infecting pre flowering uh, The disease uh, outbreaks are usually favored by uh, continuous wet conditions and humid conditions during flowering time. Uh, we have seen uh, numerous reports uh, through past facts and through personal communication via Twitter emails that apothecia have formed uh, or emerged in a lot of uh, canola growing areas of Western Australia. And usually this is actually, uh, as I mentioned, favored by cool, humid and wet conditions in most part of our wheat belt. So what options we have in terms of managing sclerotinia? Uh, research over the past five to six years have shown uh, that fungicide are the main um, tool for us to control uh, sclerotinia in season, especially in the events of early epidemics. Uh, the best timing for fungicide application is at 15 to 30% bloom. And in the event of late epidemics, which have happened in 2013, in particular uh, in our northern ag region, in that situation, the fungicide application was quite effective when targeted at 50% bloom. So what we have seen in our southern region, where usually the disease epidemics happen early in the season, the fungicide targeted at uh, 25 or 50 uh, percent stage gave us the best control of the disease and also give us the best economic return on our fungicide application. Okay, so why should we worry about sclerotinia too much? Why this is so important? I should mention that sclerotinia is the most destructive disease everywhere where uh, canola is grown and especially in Western Australia. So it can cause a lot of yield losses, especially in 2013. We estimated that sclerotinia cost us uh, about $50 million in lost production. And in uh, 2014, these losses were almost half due to unfavorable uh, conditions, especially during flowering. And in some worst affected crops, uh, which are heavily infested, the losses can be up to uh, 40%. So this clearly show us that we should be on top of this problem in order to reduce production losses from this disease. Okay, so this is just a quick snapshot what we have found so far in the current growing season. As you can see, the apothecia have almost emerged in uh, most of the canola growing areas uh, in the northern, central, south, southern and south coastal regions. As you can see all those names of the towns where we found these apothecia. And in some areas, uh, especially few crops in the northern region and many crops in the central and southern region have actually shown signs of pre-flowering infection. Okay, so I'll just uh, quickly go through the disease cycle of sclerotinia. I'm sure most of you uh, know what exactly the cycle starts and how does it happen. So, for example, the traditional um, disease cycle of sclerotinia starts with the emergence of apothecia from sclerots, then it leads to petal infection, leaf infection, and then finally, the stem infection. So this is the main predominant disease cycle. But there is another type of cycle which is usually not very common. It starts with the direct uh, germination of sclerots without the formation of apothecia. 
and these uh, scree rods when they germinate they form strands of hyphae which infect the lower leaves and from lower uh, leaves through the petiole the infection gets into the stem and in case of severe infection as you can see here it can kill the entire plant so what the general belief was in the past we were thinking that this type of disease cycle is of rare occurrence it is it can happen but uh, it it wasn't very common but for the last uh, couple of years especially last year and more so this year the uh, this type of cycle is on the rise and we are seeing a lot lots of crops which have Uh, been infected by direct germination of scree rods and causing a lot of um, uh, stem infection as well so i would really encourage everyone to uh, go out and scout your crops before they start flowering and uh, notice if they find any uh, pre flowering infection so these are some of the management options that are available uh, for managing sclerotinia for example that includes cultural practices that involves long rotations with non host crops uh, using seed free of sclerots using wide row spacing uh, to reduce the air flow through the canopy and also deep burying uh, if possible to uh, bury the sclerots quite deep into the soil so that they aren't able to germinate and produce apothecia but all these cultural practices has to be applied before the start of the season so now we are pretty much uh, <clears throat> in the middle of the season now so we can't go into the reverse gear so what options uh, is available for us is to use fungicides of course so some of the products which are registered uh, for uh, the control of uh, sclerotinia include a number of products which uh, you have active ingredient including prothioconazole and tibuconazole uh, some products with prosimidon and ipronidone uh, active ingredient what is most important uh, for using fungicide is of course the timing of application which is absolutely crucial in order to get maximum benefit of uh, fungicide sprays uh, for controlling sclerotinia okay so now as i said sclerotinia is now on our doors and we surely uh, need to decide very quickly how to manage this problem so you need to consider the key risk factors which determine the occurrence of sclerotinia in your crop and these risk factors include uh, first of all is a presence of inoculum in your current canola crop or any paddock surrounding your current canola which had a history of sclerotinia in the past and secondly you need to be aware of your um, bloom stage of the crop and especially if the crops are at very early stage of uh, uh, flowering and they are at the highest risk given the current conditions of developing uh, sclerotinia later in the season and thirdly the plant density if your crop is very dense and surely the risk of uh, developing uh, stem infection is very high and then also it also depends upon the seasonal conditions especially the conditions uh, before uh, the emergence of first flowers on your crop that will actually determine if the apothecia have been produced or not and secondly favorable conditions are also required post petal infection especially for the first 3 weeks the conditions have to be very wet and humid for the disease cycle to continue in in the crop once you have considered all your risk factors and then you have to weigh up your yield potential of the crop cost of fungicide application and the uh, fungicide itself and also the current canola price so all these um, other factors which you know probably by now one of the hardest thing is you have to find out what are the conditions which will drive the epidemics in your canola crops so to address this uh, we have done a lot of work especially over the last 5 years to find out the major weather drivers uh, which are responsible for um, uh, uh, causing a lot of disease in your crop so with the result of petal testing over the last 5 years so we have uh, found the triggers i'm very pleased to say that so those conditions involve if you have more than 40 mm of rain over the 3 weeks preceding uh, the the emergence of flowers in your crop 
and uh, uh, with the more than 75 relative humidity. So that means the apothecia are produced and they are leasing spores. And immediately after that, if the outlook is for uh, wet conditions, similar conditions, more than 40 millimeters of rain, coupled with more than 75% of relative humidity, over the next three weeks, that will drive the disease epidemics in your crops. Okay, let's talk about uh, the most um, uh, vulnerable stage of the crop when to apply fungicide application. So how to identify uh, different bloom stages? So basically what you have to do is count the number of flowers on the main stem. So once you count, you have to count the fl open flowers plus the, the pods as well and also the pods that have aborted. So if you look at on the left hand side of the column, so this is percentage bloom and the corresponding number of flowers that should be open on the main stem is on the right hand side. For example, if you look at uh, the 30% bloom, the main stem should have at least 15 to 20 flowers open uh, on the main stem and uh, be aware that uh, this all includes the open flowers, also the pods that are formed and also the pods that have aborted. So this will give you an indication what growth stage or what bloom stage your crop is. So what happens after 50% bloom? The petals that have already formed, they start falling. And at 60% bloom, you will see the yellow color starts to fade. And at about 80% bloom, you will see there were only there most of the pods on the main stem and branches, but there the number of uh, flowers has significantly reduced uh, on the main stem. Okay, so uh, now is the time for you to consider all those risk factors which I have already mentioned and uh, apply fungicide at the appropriate bloom stage. To help with that, I would like to give you an example from one of the fungicide spray timing trials that we did in South Sterling's last year. So this trial was actually done in a very high disease pressure where canola was like one year out from rotation. It, the, the, the trial was done on top of uh, 2013 stubble. So various spray timings that we used for this trial included uh, fungicide uh, targeted at 25% bloom, 50% uh, bloom, 60% bloom. And then we also included two spray applications, uh, one early and one mid bloom stage. Uh, which was 25 and 60% bloom and also very late infection, uh, sorry, very late application three weeks after 60% bloom because we are often asked a lot of questions, you know, once you have passed 50% bloom, whether it is worthwhile for you to apply fungicide or not. So to address this question, we included uh, uh, this treatment in the trial. So I was very glad with the outcome of the trial, as you can see here, all these fungicide spray timings uh, were very effective uh, in re reducing the disease levels compared with the nil, as you can see here, very high level of disease. But the treatments where we applied fungicide at 25% bloom or 50% bloom were surely most effective uh, compared with the other treatments in re reducing disease levels and also improving yield, as you can see here. This is the yield of nil plot, and this is the yield which was about 1.6 uh, ton per hectare with 25% bloom application, and it rose to about 1.75 um, ton uh, per hectare, and uh, so on, as you can see that. The only thing which I think I must mention here that when we applied fungicide very late, three weeks after 60% bloom, surely there was absolutely no effect of that late application. In terms of two application, surely they give as good response as just one application. So it really reinforces my previous messages that well-timed single application will give you the best control of the disease and you will get the best economic return uh, by this application. Okay, so let's look um, what sort of economic returns you got with all those uh, spray timings. As you can see, uh, the best uh, return on investment was when we applied uh, fungicide spray at 50% bloom. So this is because we applied the spray when maximum number of petals were open on the main stem. 
although we got very good response with 25% bloom application but surely when we apply to cover a lot of petals so that's where we got the maximum response two application not as good as single application you uh, didn't get much out of two applications last year so which shows that last year the second application wasn't really needed given the uh, prevailing weather conditions at the time so we got a little bit return with a late application 60% bloom but really the main highlight is 3 weeks after 60% bloom didn't give us any benefit in fact it chewed up all our cost of fungicide application okay so uh, now you know uh, at what stage we are in the season in terms of sclerotinia disease progression and you can use this example which i have just shown you as a guideline to make a decision whether you want to apply fungicide and when you want to use fungicide application and you can utilize the rule of thumb which i said uh, like uh, the conditions the, the main weather drivers that will drive the epidemics in your crop if you are not sure uh, the weather condition over the past few weeks you can um, look up uh, the weather uh, stations especially the map from defa and uh, that will tell you what sort of rainfall you got over the last few weeks and and look at the bomb forecast what is going to happen in the next few weeks so surely all these factors i'm sure will really help you in making uh, your decision when you want to apply, uh, apply the fungicide application and i'm sure uh, uh, this year it will not be difficult to manage sclerotinia this season so for further information uh, you can refer to all those links that i have listed here uh, if you get need to get more information on sclerotinia management thank you for listening and thank you to domini for organizing the webinar and also thank you to grdc uh, for supporting this research